Welcome, 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 everybody, to the A Little Less Fear podcast. I'm your producer and host of the show, Dr. Lino Martinez. This is your motivational podcast of people's incredible journeys. Oh, yeah, let's do this. Welcome back, everybody, to the Little Less Fear podcast. Today, I would like to introduce Dennis Timpanaro. Did I say that correct? You got it, Dr. Lino. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> awesome. He is the co-founder of Motivation, motivation training speaker on health and fitness motivation. If you're ready for a healthy change for real this time, join him at Motivation. He's a, he's a motivation training pro. Actually, he has a motivation training program that helps you get and stay motivated to reach your health goals. I love anything motivation, especially with the word motivation, and I'm ready to go there. So welcome to A Little Less Fear podcast. Thanks for having me, Dr. Lino. Love the energy in the start. I know we were talking a little bit earlier, but uh, uh, it is funny, right? That motivation, that energy is contagious. So let's see if we can get some people excited today. It really is contagious, you know, and it's it's like uh, whenever I feel motivated and then somebody starts feeling motivated with me, it's like it keeps climbing and climbing and climbing. Yes. And it reaches this peak where we could just both hold it together and just flow together. And that's where all the goodness starts coming, all the positiveness, all the energy and creative flow and harmony. Well, that's the most beautiful thing about motivation. It creates harmony. Absolutely. We probably won't get into all the nerdy stuff, but there is actually there's a subset of people too that are particularly motivated by by groups, right? So there's a little bit of uh, like social contagion there. And if there's energy in that group, there's motivation, there's accountability. They are very driven by that. So if that's sounds like that's you, um, and if anyone listening is in that same bucket, find that find that group, seek that out. It'll help. That's so true. You know what? Because I've been in groups where if I'm the only motivated one feeling pumped and the whole energy is low around me, I start yeah. to feel low. Yeah. And I start to close off. I'm like, okay, well, well what am I doing then? <laughs> it's, not, it's the temperature of the room. <laughs> exactly. So, hey, Dennis, tell us about your journey. What brought you to motivation? What brought you to motivation? Uh, I will give you the abridged version because I'm sure nobody wants to hear about me for uh, for 55 minutes straight. <laughs> it's not very exciting. But uh, growing up, I had always been interested in the Olympics. I, I remember playing, you know, old like computer games and stuff. I'm like, oh, this is fun. You know, this big stadium, the Olympics are here. And uh, candidly, I was an uh, a above average athlete, but not good by any means, right? Not like a standout, didn't play college sports or anything. So like, I just worked hard. I was overachieving, but not naturally gifted. And I remember uh, it was about maybe eight years into my corporate career, right? I was doing the same old boring corporate stuff. And I just said, what am I doing for myself right now? How old right? I know what I'm doing for my career. I know what I'm doing for my money, but what am I doing for me right now? And how old were you when you started questioning that? Th this was late 20s. So this was, uh, yeah, late 20s. That's so really quarter life question, crisis. Yeah. I don't know what you want to call it. Depends how many you have. Um, <laughs> so I, I remember going to, this was right around the time the Olympics uh, was being pitched and Chicago was one of the finalists to host the 2016 games or 2012 games. I'm trying to remember which year it was. But uh, I remember getting really excited. We were in the city working and then Chicago lost. They got knocked out in the first round of uh, the finalists. I said, well, that's it. You know what? This is this is my time. I'm going to try to do something. I'm going to go to the Olympics. And people are laughing and like, oh, what are you going to go to the Olympics in, right? You just, you don't have any sport you're playing right now. And I said, well, I'll figure it out. And I did the least emotional rational approach you could and and look through all the different sports that existed what i could be good at what i could do individually what i had the budget for what i could do for a long time and archery came to the top of that list oh, I love and everybody laughed <laughs> have you played archery? have you shot archery before you know just for fun but not yeah. i mean nothing <laughs> nothing professionally it's it's so first of all it's a very fun sport if you're listening you haven't tried it uh pick yeah, up the bowl. there's lots of little clubs are always willing to bring you in i never shot any firearms or uh or archery I had, I had nothing like that growing up i wasn't allowed to touch anything that could murder my brothers <laughs> so so i picked archery i i got lessons i worked hard i remember even like bringing my bow on the train to work at times and getting weird looks and 
you know, long story short, I actually got decent at it, Dr. Lino. Like I got good coaching. I practiced really hard and I became world ranked. I became US ranked. Wow. And yeah, it was it was wild. Uh, certainly not great at it, but again, made it further than I thought I could. And I went to the Olympic trials the first time. I was super excited. I was shooting really well in practice. I figured, hey, this is my shot. I can maybe make the first cut and keep going. And I sucked. <laughs> And I sucked. I was nervous. I was tense. I didn't shoot freely. Um, I did all the, the things you do when it's your first time competing in very, very high pressure at that level. I remember coming home and being really depressed and sad, um, essentially going from practicing 20 hours a week to I didn't want to like even get out of bed. And then <laughs> the weirdest thing happened. Uh, an Under Armour commercial. I'm not sponsored, okay? So there's only 20 <laughs> ideas. But an Under Armour commercial pops on. It's Michael Phelps. And if you remember at the time, Michael Phelps was one of the greatest swimmers of all time. Oh, yeah. And just got into a little bit of trouble. Uh, he was enjoying some weed and having a good time. I being, remember. You know, yeah. yeah. Just living life, right? Right. And everyone's like, oh, boy, what a terrible role model this guy is. And, uh, and it's funny to even look back on it at this point. So the commercial was all about him coming back. Working hard, waking up early, you know, trying to to silence the pundits and the critics, and it was just this like this bolt through me. And I got up the next day at five a.m. Again, remember, I'd been cut at this point. There was nothing to work for. It's the middle of winter at this point. I haven't been practicing. I got up at five a.m. to go practice in my cold garage for an hour before work because I was so excited. And I said, "What? What about this?" set of circumstances in me and this commercial and who I am got me motivated and out of this funk. I want to know what it is and I want to study it and understand it. And that is what birthed the idea of motivation, figuring out what motivates us to stay healthy, how people can apply it. How am I different and unique than everybody else? And, you know, I would say the rest is history, but we still got a long way to go. So yes. the rest is recent history. So then what did you figure out? About what got you motivated? What about that commercial? What about Michael Phelps? What about he's yeah. starting to work on his life? What did you figure it out? Uh, we'll never all figure all of it out, right? I'm not that smart. We have a, a, a sure CPO. Our, our product officer is a multiple degree. Uh, his name's Danny, right? Multiple degree psychology and in physical training and, and nutrition. We still only know so much of it, right? But what what we did learn and what we've read about and and understood is that there's two really surprising things about motivation. The first is motivation is unique. It's different for you. It's different for me. We might have similar traits, but it's unique, right? It's based on our upbringing, our values, our experiences, even like our genes and socioeconomic status, right? All these things come together to influence how we are motivated. Right. So that it, it kind of makes sense, right? When you think about why did that work for me and why didn't that work for somebody else? Yes. The second piece, and this is uh, probably the most important piece, is that motivation is not will, it's a skill. So motivation is a skill, right? And if something's a skill, you know, what does that mean? Right. What does that mean? Yeah. Um, if, like any other skill, that's the crazy part about it. You can learn it, you can practice it, and you can strengthen it. Ooh, and when I I figured those things out, right? I, it was, wasn't me. I'm not a, a research psychologist. But when I finally learned those two things, it changed my entire perspective. Mm -hmm. And so, and going back to that motivation that you felt after seeing Michael Phelps back back in the ring, if you could say it like that, back in the ring of fire. Yeah. Um. You, what I'm based on what you're telling me, what motivation is. So then you decided you that you had this skill at that moment and that you or you wanted to learn that skill and therefore you started practicing it and strengthening it yeah but what still what got you to feel emotionally and mentally ready to get up at 5 a.m i'm not really seeing the tie here yeah so what i didn't realize at the time right so that was the spark for me to try to study this and understand it and reach out to people that, that knew better than spark. me that was the spark. Yeah, it took me probably another two years. Um, and we could talk about today too, until I realized that there's different traits in all of us. Mm -hmm. And my traits matched up most like Michael Phelps did in that case. So I'm excellent. Uh, yeah, it, it's kind of crazy to look back and, and tie it all together. I guess no one's really asked it in that way, but we have something called motivational personalities. We've created these mm -hmm. to help people understand, you know, what drives them, what doesn't what things excite you, maybe where you get stuck, how you overcome obstacles. 
what happens when you're dealing with, you know, hardship or in good times. And my motivational personality is called a partial perfectionist. Okay. That means work hard, play hard, right? So I may go really hard Monday to Friday in the gym or train for archery and then have a bunch of drinks all weekend and not think about it. Or I could be on for three months of training and then super low key for the summer. But I know I'll get back to it and I'm driven by getting back to it, right? It's that balance of I'm on and then I'm off so I can live. Um, and that commercial was a comeback. The whole thing was a comeback. He was off for a while, enjoying life. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to take all my energy. I'm going to come back and I'm going to work towards it. And I'm going to be driven and motivated by it. So I'm, I'm actually kind of fascinated you brought that up. I hadn't really connected all the dots, uh, you know, until just recently on that, the last couple of years. Excellent. Yeah. You know what, when you're telling me this, I'm starting to feel into, into this incredible story that you had when you finally had the spark. And I'm feeling that you subconsciously were aware somehow in the back of your head that you had similar personality traits to Michael Phelps and you felt this connection and it just Maybe. kind of brought you back to life and said, Hey man, he's doing it. That I've got that in me too. The subconscious is always a step ahead, right? So it, it, exactly. it might've been, it might've known already. Yeah. So you definitely related with him and he pumped you up, which is what yeah. we're all here to do collectively exactly. as a human race, motivate each other, motivate each other, be kind to each other. Yeah. Help each other out. So what happened after that? What happened after you finally got motivated to get up at five in the morning and start <laughs> going back to archery again? What happened after that? Yeah. So as the, the story goes, um, again, I continued to shoot archery. I, I haven't shot competitively in about the last year. I've, I've put it down a little bit to deal with. I've got, I've got two kids. I've got two jobs. Uh, it, it's been a lot, right? Yeah, and the travel and the competition and the other aspects of it were just it was like fourth place in my life and it wasn't, I wasn't given the attention I needed, but for the following 10 years, kind of after that moment, um, you know, I continued to, well, a little less than 10 years. I continued to practice, continued to improve my scores, continued to not, it's not this glory story of all gold medals raining down on me. Right. Sure. I had my wins. I had my losses. I had my lessons. I had, uh, amazing experiences from the, the top coach in the world, giving me some lessons to, you know, having my lowest score in eight years, right? It, it fluctuates back and forth. And that's kind of, that's life and that's competition. But uh, the motivation stayed with me and that's what helped me create, you know, motivation here. It turned into actually a business to help other people. And how did that happen? Uh, so the short version is in college, I'd always been interested in entrepreneurship. I'd always wanted to start my own business. I never had the guts, right? And I, I remember taking a an entrepreneurship class my senior year, had a fantastic professor who was a small business owner too. He's like, all right, you're going to start this, this business idea you had, right? I look around, I'm like, no way, that sounds, why would I do that? I don't get any money. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm scared, right? We talk about a little less fear. I was loaded <laughs> with fear and excuses. So I have no regrets that I didn't do it at the time, but I wasn't ready. So that... Uh, much like, you know, drive and passion that most people have, it doesn't leave you. It stays inside. Yeah. You just actively repress it until the moment is right. And the moment is right when I had an opportunity to leave a very nice job. Um, I worked at McDonald's for a number of years, you know, corporate stuff, had a great team, good friends, and there was an opportunity to leave. And I said, this, this could be like, I don't know if I should leave, but I, if I do, like I could take this and I could start my business. Yeah, and I, I made the leap. I actually conquered my fear for a minute there and made the leap to start motivation. So I left a high paying, you know, six figure job with a family at the time, um, with you know a completely different career, completely different industry, with no connections, and jumped out to start this business. And that and so, is how motivation started. Oh man, that's a, that's an incredible leap of faith to le be leaving a good job like that and having a family and everything. What was your vision at the time for motivation, and who came up with that title or the the actual name motivation? Yeah, so, uh, so that was me, right? It's not a I'm not a marketing person. That's why I have Kim as our, our chief marketing officer. But you know, I just changed the M into a G because I wanted to get people going. I wanted to yeah. encourage people to get going, whether it was health, whether it was nutrition, whether it's just having a positive mindset. Yes. Um, so that's where the business started. Uh, frankly, like it kind of does what most startups do. I floundered around and wasted a bunch of money and time learning and 
trying to figure things out. And uh, invariably, the first iteration of that, that vision failed. I ran out of money. I ran out of time. And I ended up having to go back to work. And it was tough. It was tough on my family. It was tough on my friends. It was tough on, on me, right, in my psyche. Uh, so I needed some help, right? And I brought on uh, Kim, a co-founder, Danny, our partner in on the product side. And eventually, if you surround yourself with smart, hardworking people, you figure it out. Yeah, absolutely. And also the fact that you 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 were open to receiving help and that's actually motivating in itself too. Rather than closing up and saying, you know, I'm done. I didn't do well this first time. Oh, I failed. It's never going to be done. You kind of yeah. took a break again and then you felt the motivation, the push again to go I'll push forward. And then you opened up your heart and your mind and your soul and other people came in to help you and level you up. You know, what's uh, I guess it's interesting, or maybe it's maybe it's me. I don't know. We'll see if anybody relates. But growing up, uh, I had good grades. I didn't have to study a lot. You know, like kind of one of those stories was like I just got it. I don't know why. Maybe it was genetic. I had a you know kind parents that were supportive and stuff. Um, so I, I never really needed a lot of help. And you're kind of taught in that scenario as you're growing up. It's like, well, you're independent. You could do it yourself. You don't need help. Don't reach out to people. That's a sign of weakness. Yeah. And it took me a very long time, um, you know, later into my career and in college and things I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, maybe I'm not that good, right? I do need people to help me out here. Your natural talent runs out. It has a limit at a certain point. And I think in the entrepreneurial world, especially, but in archery, in health, in wellness, in mental health, getting help is key. You will not get, get very far trying to do it on your own. And the sooner I was able to accept that and get help, connect with people and learn, um, the, the farther I've gone. Yeah, and the beautiful thing about that, when you open up like that, you're also helping them. It's like everyone starts helping each other. Everyone's holding hands together and the connection just keeps growing and growing and growing. And that's the beautiful thing about allowing help in. I look at what you do with this podcast and your writings and the story that you share, right? And um, maybe you don't see it this way, but you're helping a lot of people. And the feeling of helping others is one of the most satisfying uh, things you can do in your life. It really is. More than anything else. It really is because it's selfless and it comes from a place of purity. It comes from honesty, integrity, and love. And nothing is more expansive than that. That's it. That's it. I remember, uh, again, I've, I've had a, been very fortunate in my corporate career. In my, you know, uh, I know a lot of people are struggling, so I, I'll never look down on it. I'll never say it was a bad choice. I'm happy. I'm, I'm grateful for it. But I remember the first time I got a true compliment at Godivation. So we were working with this woman. Um, she'd just given birth. She, you know, I don't know if it was postpartum or not, but she'd just given birth. She was really down. She wanted to get, she wanted to feel like herself again. She'd been stuck for a long time and she used to be an athlete, great shape, and she just wasn't feeling like herself. And we finished the first course with her. It was a 30 day program. And I remember her sending me a note just saying, you know, this, this like made me happier than anything I've done the last 30 days has helped change my life, get me back on track. And, you know, maybe she was just a little overly exuberant at that point. Cause that seems strong to me. Um, but I've never felt more satisfaction in anything I've done until I had received that compliment. Nothing at my other jobs ever lived up to that one little nice remark. So um, helping other people, even if you don't get that feedback, it just, it goes such a long way for your own well-being. It really does. And you know, right now, as you said that you, you're not really too sure because of how strong maybe the emotion was, but I, yeah. I feel that it was sincere and that's why it motivated you so much. And that's why you felt so good. And that's why you still remember it to this day. I and think it's, so. It's things like that, that just keep pumping you up to keep going, keep going and keep going. Big time. So tell us about the motivation program. How does it work? Yeah. Let's say, let's say I go to you and I'm like, Hey, you know, <laughs> I'm a former disabled person and I've got some disabilities. I'm not sure I can sure. ever, you know, have the body of my dreams. I'm feeling a lack of motivation. Uh, I work out really hard and I'm seeing little results, but I'm here to, I'm coming to you because I need this motivation to pump me up and know that I can have that dream body. Yeah. Um, we are all about the mental side. So when you think about health and wellness, and this is grossly generalized, but when you think about health and wellness, mm -hmm. usually it's about 80% diet, nutrition, right? What are you putting in your body? How are you taking care of your body? About 20% exercise or fitness. What are you doing with your body? Mm -hmm. But what people overlook is that it's also 100% mental, 
So 80% nutrition, 20% fitness, 100% mental. And we focus exclusively on the mental side to help people get the mindset and the skills they need to stick with whatever they pick, right? If you're into yoga, right. fantastic. If you're into sailing, go for it. If you're a nerd like me and you like archery, uh -huh. fine by me, you want to dance. All of those are fantastic exercises. Right. If you like shake programs, great. If you like paleo, fantastic. It doesn't matter, right? There's plenty of science and information around all those programs to be effective. But if you can't stick with them, if you get stuck, that's usually up here. Yeah. It's usually up here, right? Even right. with physical limitations, like you talked about, there's adaptive exercises that'll work. Yes. So what we focus on, again, is entirely the mental piece of it. So we help people understand starting, uh, the starting point is always our motivational personality quiz. Oh, wow. And that's what we talked about earlier about that uniqueness piece. So everybody's unique. Yes. And until you can figure out how you are uniquely motivated, you really can't unlock the right way to stay motivated with whatever activity you're you're interested in, right? True. So start with the quiz. What's on that quiz? Yeah, the quiz is uh, about 30 questions. It takes, I don't know, depends how much you overthink it. <laughs> if you're an overthinker like me, uh, it'll take you 10 <laughs> minutes. If you just go through it and, and try not to, you know, critique your entire life, probably about three minutes. Um, but they are psychology-based questions that help us figure out your traits. And the outcome of that quiz is your motivational personality. Ooh, I love it. Yeah, there's four types. Um, I know I shared one of them earlier. That's me, right? So I'm a partial perfectionist. That's one type of motivational personality. Uh, partial perfectionist, just think about work hard, play hard. You might okay. be on for a while and then go take a break. You might eat really clean all day and then finish the night with a sleeve of Girl Scout cookies. And that's <laughs> totally cool because that's how you operate and you know you'll get back to it. But right. if someone tries to say, no, you know, Dr. Lino, you can't have dessert. You're going to be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, that's that's who I am. Like, that's part of who I am. That's, right. how, I, that's how I balance all this hard work. Yeah. Uh, and not a very motivational situation. So uh, that's partial perfectionist. Next up is discipline doer. They are very oh, motivated sorry, discipline by what? Uh, disciplined doer. Oh, disciplined doer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. These, I mean, you could tell I made up all these terrible names. Uh, just not a, not a marketing <laughs> guy, I but uh, so disciplined doer is driven by schedules, mm. by detail, right? By planning, by processes and progress. Um, they want to follow a plan. And they want to detail that plan and they want to have a schedule of what they're eating in the morning and when they're going to their yoga class and how they're recovering. Um, they love they love and are driven by that. They like that structure. Very conscientious people. Okay. Uh, where so are we at? Number three. Doer. Yeah. Number three is the self-controlled spectator. Not just a clever name. So a, a self-controlled spectator has a inordinate amount of motivation based on their control. They like to oh. make decisions. That drives them, right? I want to be in control. I want to think through the outcomes. I want to think through the long-term and the short-term and then come back together and make a decision. Sometimes it's yes, that's going to be a healthy decision for me. Sometimes it's no, I don't want to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. But that self-control is what drives them. They want to be in the driver's seat. Uh, and last, certainly not least, is the laid-back learner. Okay. The laid back learner. Laid back learner is kind of, I don't want to say the opposite of discipline doer, but if discipline doer is schedules and blood, sweat and tears and give me all the details, they're like, I want to enjoy this. Mm -hmm. I want some variety. I want it to be fun. I want to remember it when I'm done, not pass out on the floor. Right. I want to try different foods and experiment. I want to learn and take in a whole bunch of information and consume it. Um, it's not worth doing if it's not enjoyable in their perspectives. Right. So. Those are the four. Um, so basically, it's not worth it unless it's enjoyable for the laid back learner. Yeah, it's got to be. They, again, they thrive on kind of variety and enjoyment. Uh, not necessarily always the social aspect, but that does come into play quite a bit with laid back learners, right? Doing group activities, being with other people and having fun. Uh -huh. Yeah. Can we ask you a question about the self control spectator? Yeah. So if they're motivated based on control and they want to think about it and make their decision, how and when do they actually get that spark? Because yeah. it feels very indecisive when you're reading this. There, there is so every so look, there is no one right person. There's no one unique personality. In fact, 
if anybody tells you like you are just this personality in life, whether it's Myers Briggs or Disc yeah. or something else, they're wrong because we all have blends. You're going to see yourself mostly in one, but there'll be aspects of you in sure, all of them. That makes sense. We're human beings. Yeah. Yeah. So that means that with every good thing, there's also, you know, a counter to that, something you got to watch out for. So with self control spectators, you already zoomed in on it. Sometimes they get stuck in decision paralysis. Yeah. They would rather wait on the sidelines sometimes until that perfect choice comes up and they're not doing anything for a while, right? Well, that doesn't exactly fit my schedule, so I'm not going to go for it. Or, you know, I remember reading about this and that's not, it doesn't align with what I, my palate prefers, so I'm going to skip that one. And what can happen is, again, the downside to self-control is you end up waiting too long to take action. Because any action is better than no action for right. your body. Uh, but they got to be careful of that. So watch out. Yeah. So how do you motivate somebody like that? Sometimes they need a little push. Um, it's, it's an interesting balance. We talk about it in the report. So all the information is in the motivational personality report. There's a free version that's, you know, a couple pages. It's nice. It gives you an overview. And then there's an in-depth, like, nerd out, give me 30 pages about me, how I work with other people, how I get stuck, how I get unstuck. You know, what might drive me, what activities could be fun, what activities might turn me off a little bit. But we talk about it in there that sometimes you need a little push and maybe that's coaching, right? Maybe that's a friend or a peer that's doing it first with you, right? Hey, come and join me. I know you're not totally decided yet, but have a little tease. Come try for 20 minutes for, for fun for free. They need just a little, a little bit of push. And then they, they jump in the game and they're committed. That sounds awesome. That yeah, I don't awesome. have that skill, by the way. I'm not a high self control person, being a uh, dis being a partial perfectionist. So as I'm reading this, I can see that I'm a cross between laid back learner and um and and uh, oh, I can't say I'm a work hard play hard. I feel like I'm always working hard. Yes. I if you are enjoying this episode, we can further discuss this topic of motivation on the Uchi app where we can connect and discuss five questions between eight different listeners. Stay tuned at the end of this episode for more information on the Uchi app. Uchi as in U-C-H-I. Sounds like you got a lot of discipline doer based on your aspirations, what you've yeah, done with the podcast, so. your life. You're very driven. I am, yeah, and I am pretty much on a schedule. Like, I mean, I, I work out five to six days a week, and it it needs to be at least one hour. Yeah, I am. I'm very. That's discipline, buddy. That's discipline, doer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, once how do you feel about that? I, I mean, curious. Yeah. I know you haven't read the report yet, but maybe after the podcast, you could take it and tell me what you think. What at a high level, how does that make you feel? Uh, how does which one make me feel? Uh, the fact that we've realized right now that I'm a discipline doer. Probably, yeah. That's where I put my money, but I'm not. You know. We'll let the, the question answer. What do you because think? Because I, I mean, I know this about me since I was a kid. You know, I went, I was in martial arts for about 10 years when I was a little kid. I got gold medals at the Junior Olympics. Yeah, I was uh, awesome. Yeah, thank you. I was very um, motivated and disciplined, and it's been following me, I mean, all the way since I was a kid. So I know that's part of my personality trait. Yeah, I definitely welcome that title for sure. That's cool. Yeah, that's thank cool. you. So once you actually get these quizzes in, then and these these answers of your new potential client, you then know who you're dealing with or who you might be dealing with, and you know how to go in after that. That's the key, right? It, it's it's partially for us to help, right? But it's also for the self awareness for that customer to say, "Hey, look, I get it now. Like this is why this is why I act this way, or this is why I get stuck here." And where most people want to talk and where we want to go next is, where are you getting stuck? Because knowing yourself is great, right? Having that knowledge is really important. But then it's how do you start to change and get, it's behavior change, right? How do you start to change to take action? And most people are getting stuck in one of multiple ways or sometimes a combination of things. So the next piece is always taking that personality and then trying to dig deeper uh, and figure out what are the sticking points? Mm -hmm. And when you're trying to figure out the sticking point, is this based on results or is it based on them communicating to you or observation? Yeah. So the way we've done it in the past is through a course. What we're about to launch in the next couple of months is actually a, it's still a course, but it also has one-on-one -on -one coaching too. Group coaching is going to help them say, all right, you're trying to diagnose. This is tough, right? We're not, we're, I'm not a psychologist um, and we're not doctors, but we're helping them to come to the answer. So there's a couple of places where people usually get stuck. 
confidence is a big one. Importance is a big one, right? So the call it the uh, the prioritization, uh, right? Is it a high priority in your life, or is it something that sounds good but it's lower? Confidence is: Do I think I can do this, or, or am I am I scared? Like, is is this something I don't think I can pull off? Those are two big ones. You have all the other socioeconomic and internal factors. Do you have a bad job, right? Is a bad job burning you out? Is there stress in your family or relationships, right? Um, there's a whole host of other things, everything from uh, maybe it's locus of control. Sometimes people feel powerless. They think the world's happening to them and there's nothing you could do so they don't take action. They get stuck there. Sometimes it's it's competence, right? It's like, I, I literally don't know how to cook a healthy meal. I don't know how to do, you know, yeah. push-ups. And they get, they, if you don't have that sense of, of knowledge, it's rare that you're going to go out and try that on your own. So that's where we go. We try to get into that level and say, all right, these couple things really look like where you're getting hung up on the line. How do we help you strengthen those mindset skills? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And how do you work with them? Do you work with them both in person and remotely? It's all remote right now. Um, Excellent. Because we... We try to scale and you know help as many people as possible. So the new program that we're going to be launching that's going to be uh, you know like a, a Zoom based course and thirty days of practice and training and you know education. The one after that is called Motivated in a Month. That was actually our original course. Wow, I love and that. That is a, yeah a self paced course to help you practice those skills. So once you figure out where you're stuck, then you need to actually build up the skill sets to overcome them or do your best. Right. Right. And so yeah. you have a whole team. We have a small team. We have a small team. Yeah. And I think that, a whole team sounds generous, but you know, we're, we're a small business. And so the small team, um, how do you uh, all kind of like separate or individuate and come together with each client? Yeah. So clients sign up for the motivational personality you could take right now, right? That's self-service. It's how do, uh, how do we take that? How do we take this quiz? Sure. Yeah. Head to gotivation.com. Uh-huh. And then at the top right, or one of the many orange buttons, click, you know, take quiz or start quiz. Okay. And again, the quiz, if you want the free version, it's free. We're happy to help. And we hope it excites you and gives you some insights. Yeah. If you want to get nerdy and really figure out like what's going on, <laughs> you know, there's a premium version too. Um, the enrollment for the new course will be up fairly soon. It might actually be launched by the time, you know, this podcast airs. We'll let you yeah. know in the, maybe in the show notes or something, but uh, same thing. You'll sign up there. You'll get assigned a starting time for your cohort. So a group of, of people you'll be working with, kind of classmates. And then you'll have the lessons online and then virtual training uh, you know, on Zoom or something like that each week. That sounds excellent. Thanks. We hope so, right? I mean, we're testing it out, making sure it's good for everybody right now. But the, How the goal has is... has it been going strong now? Uh, I, I mean, strong's... <laughs> Hey, I, I feel I feel I feel the energy and I feel the motivation and I feel that it's strong. I, I love it, man. And you know, strong depends on who you ask and depends on my own limiting beliefs at times, right? I'm human like everybody else. There's times where I wish we would have helped a million people by now. Oh yeah. But there's times where I go, well, it's you know, I have two jobs and a family and other things going on, and so do all my my co-founders and my peers, right? We all have families and jobs. So like we're trying to make as much progress as we can, but balance our lives. Uh, How long so have I, you been motivated with Gotivation? Gotivation is is six years old, believe it or not. That's six incredible. Six years old. So yeah, I've been doing that for a while. Um, Kim and Danny have been on the team for a while at this point, and it's just, we're not stopping. We got a lot of people to help, uh, and we're driven. So I love it. I love the yeah. energy. Thanks, man. So what's your biggest joy and your biggest takeaway with Gotivation right now? It It is the... Uh, I think I shared it earlier, right? It's the feedback, it, which is funny, right? So if anyone out there is a small business owner as well, you know that the best part, the hardest part, and the most necessary part of your business is getting customer feedback. So I, I say it's all those things because there was a, a book I read once that described it as, imagine you're going to the prom and, and you have to ask your date, right? Uh, will you come to the prom with me? And they go. No. And here are all the reasons why. And you have to be open to take that feedback and not cry and not shut down and not get angry. Because if you don't listen, you can't make the changes necessary to help other people out and build a better product. 
So to me, that's the good and the bad, right? You have to hear that feedback to make your product better, your business better, to, to grow as a person. But also every once in a while, you get those little nuggets of you helped me, you motivated me, you helped me get out of a dark spot, you helped me get energy to, to like take care of my body and live longer or eat right. And that that's the fuel that keeps me going. That's well, I got to tell you, Dennis, that you've motivated me. And even though I'm already self-motivated, these you are- You seem the pretty seeds. motivated, man. You've got but it down. These seeds help. You know, these yeah. people that you meet, these, these connections, they keep pumping me up. They pump you up. They pump listeners up. And this yeah. is what it's all about. I'm very grateful to have connected with you and to have had you on a Little Less Fear podcast. Um, how can our viewers, our watchers, and our listeners find you and Gotivation? Yeah, you can find Gotivation at Gotivation.com. Uh, I'm also on mostly Instagram, uh, you know, uh, Dennis underscore Timpanero. You can find us out there. So Dr. Lino, thank you for the opportunity to share not just the story, right, but help maybe provide a few few nuggets uh, and some motivation for everybody. I love what you're doing. Keep it up. I love what you're doing. Thank you so much. And you keep it up. We're going to keep it up. We're going we're to keep it that up. Vibration we'll keep going together. with motivation. I'm feeling excellent. You have an excellent weekend. Thank you so much for being on A Little Less for Your Podcast. Thanks, Dr. Lino. Thank you for listening to A Little Less Fear Podcast. As a special free bonus, I've partnered with the Uchi app, spelled U-C-H-I, for eight listeners, first come, first serve, to join me in deeper conversation using a private Uchi tribe specific to this episode. Those listeners not randomly selected will receive a free complimentary Uchi tribe to use as they desire. Uchi is a free social app that guides private conversations using a question and answer format. I've come up with a handful of questions about today's episode, and we'd like a small group of our listeners to share their perspectives with each other, and I'll share mine too. Together, we'll discuss our answers and comments over the next one to two weeks. Register for the drawing using the link in the show notes, and be sure to include the episode's code. The drawing will be held after the episode is live. So sign up soon, and we'll see you in the episode's Uchi Tribe. Thank you, thank you, thank you all so much for all the listeners, the viewers, the watchers, and the subscribers. If you have not yet subscribed, go ahead and do so, and please share the story, share this journey, share this podcast with your friends and your family. You can find information on my book, details about my book, on my website at www.alittlelessfear.com, where you will also find my freelance poetry that I write to visual poetry with video for businesses and for social marketing. If you are interested, please send me an email at a little less fear at gmail.com. Again, my website is www.alittlelessfear.com. And if you'd like to be on the show, you can also send me an email. Or if you have any questions or comments at a little less fear at gmail.com. Feel free to also check out my YouTube channel also titled a little less fear podcast where you will catch all of these episodes on video on YouTube. Thank you all so much. I love you. Thanks for your support. Take care and keep shining on. Rock on. I love you.